the world's greatest podcast in America, John Reed, Cody McClure. Cody, how's Texas? Well, John, I hate to start the podcast saying the same old thing every time, but I got in the car today to go into Austin, and when I got in, 103, the meter read, 103. So, just like the last few episodes, I can tell you Texas is hot. How are you doing? I am doing okay. You know, you always bitched and moan about how cold Tennessee was. So, you know, you kind of got what you were after. You wanted some heat. Sounds like Texas is delivering some Texas Pete type of Texas heat. The, yeah, the heat is the real deal down here. Got to be the hottest part of the country other than maybe Miami. But I was looking at the weather in Miami right now, and it's not even... It's not even close to this, so it's a it's a whole different deal down here. But I guess it's how getting you, warmer everywhere. How are you feeling about Texas at the moment? Oh well, I like Texas. You know, I got no problems with Texas. The people here are nice. It's a good vibe. Uh, I've definitely gained weight because the food. Uh, there's a lot of food that just just readily available stuff that. You normally don't eat, but it's just there. Like, you know, it, it's a great food area, great food city. Austin is. Can't really get good pizza, but everything else is good. So I don't know. I like Texas. So what? What? Why? What are you getting at? No, I was just wondering. I was just wondering how you're doing. I, I got a couple <laughs> messages actually asking if you were still doing comedy at all. So we haven't gotten any updates on the podcast lately about it. So I was just kind of curious how things are going well i've been going to kill tony hadn't been getting up there you know obviously and then i have slacked off a little bit i've been doing about two mics a week pretty consistently going to roscoe's and the uh the the hipster coffee place they do the wednesday night mic but um, are you just going to roscoe's because of the food no it's i've told you it's not roscoe's chicken and waffles that's in los angeles you're getting my cities confused this is this is just called Roscoe's Comedy Club. But, uh, you know, it, it, Austin's interesting. I mean, you see a lot of interesting things, like uh, especially with the hot weather. There's a lot of beautiful women out, as you can imagine. Um, I saw a Spanish girl running down the street earlier. She was chasing a dog. She was yelling, Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. I guess she was trying to get to the dog. And... and uh, her, just her and her friend were running behind it. Pero, pero. I thought that was funny. Just a fun little thing, you know, things you notice, things you pick up on. I wrote a song today. Oh, yeah? About what? Uh, it's about a girl. You know, every song's kind of loosely about a girl. What's her name? Well, it's not It's not like that kind of song. It's not. It's not like a girl specifically, you know. It's not called like, uh, you know, Caroline or whatever. Angie, it's just a song. I'm asking. A, I'm asking about which girl in your life has motivated you to write the song. I just, I don't know. I just felt a creative burst this morning, and I, I got I picked up my guitar. And you know, the good thing about being in my own space here is I can play my guitar pretty much as loud as I want. So I just felt the, I felt the creativity. Hell yeah, this bro! Rock and roll, yeah. Ah. I can play my guitar as loud as I want, bro. Ah. It's really not even like that. I mean, it's... Ah, rock and roll. Strumming my guitar, yeah. I wouldn't even call it really a rock and roll song. It's kind of a mid-tempo kind of... It's not a ballad, but it's not a full rocker. It's somewhere in the middle, kind of a mid-tempo. All right, let's hear it. What do you mean? Let's hear the lyrics. Well, I don't have the lyrics readily available. Well, actually, I do have them probably in my notepad. Well, I mean, it doesn't really sound good if I just read you lyrics. You well, know? sing us a song then, Piano Man. What do you mean, play it? Well, however you need to do it. Let's hear it. Either read the lyrics or or play us a song. I'm not a good singer. Well, just give us the chorus. Well, okay, so I'll tell you the lyrics, and then you tell me if you want to pl- me to play it. The the chorus sing is, it with a sing it sing it with a little a little rhythm at least though. Why don't I just why don't I just play you a chorus and verse? Let's see okay. if this comes through. Hang on. 
Oh, I'm about to get the ick so bad here. Uh, the secondhand embarrassment's about to be through the roof. What are you here. saying about me behind my back? Nothing. Let's hear the song. Does that come through? Yeah. Does it sound good or bad? Mm, uh, it doesn't sound great, but we can pick it up on what's happening here. That oh, sounds good now. Hang on, I gotta remember. I gotta remember how I did it. The tempo. first met you I knew you would be mine when I laid your eyes upon you I nearly got damn died that's been ten, oh, what a, ten years ago my the time goes by I wonder babe are you still the same Still afraid to fly. Well, you tattoo. Yeah, I got the rhythm off on the chorus, but it's like, all right. Well, your tattoos may be fading, but those legs are still in vogue. Tell me, honey, do you still have love for rebels, ramblers, and rogues? Yeah, something like that. It's called now, Rebels. What, what was what was the last part of that chorus? Well, I fucked the chorus up, but it's but Rebels. Just, what was the last part? Do you still have what? Do you still have love for Rebels, Ramblers, and Rogues? I got the idea from a book on my bookshelf about Mick Jagger. It's It says Rambler, Rebel, Rogue, or some shit. And then I was on the second chorus, I changed it to Do You Still Have Soul Like Rebels, Ramblers, and Rogues? Oh, yeah, it, it's pretty, it's a, it's a real rough draft, you know. But, sure. But I think it could be good eventually. You know what? It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Your tattoos may be fading, but these your those legs are still in vogue. How about that? Now, that's a rock lyric. That's a rock and roll lyric, isn't it? And that little, yeah. r- that little riff, that little... Oh, I fucked it up again. Yeah, you're... yeah well... What, I, what I've discovered here is you're not very good at guitar. No, I'm playing an open G. I, I'm, I'm under pressure because we're on the podcast here. It's like. Yeah, I mean, you are playing I mean, for thousands of people. It's a bigger gig than most people get. I'm just saying uh, what I've discovered is you're not very good at guitar. I I'm, thought you were pretty good. I'm but- good on the guitar. I'm, I'm doing I, this is my own thing. This is not a cover. I'm, I, I'm making this no, I, myself. I, I, I understand. I can, yeah, like I now can that do you've stuff on the guitar. All right. Now that you've actually had to show you can play the guitar, I, I'm starting to see you're not very good well, at it. Well, it's not really a guitar song. It's more like it's between a ballad. I can play the damn guitar. I can play. I, I can do. You know, I can do all kinds of stuff. You can I, just copy other. You can just copy and paste. I can play the guitar. Don't you worry. Don't do it, don't do it too close. We'll get kicked off YouTube. Yeah, I'd hate for that to happen. So anyway, I'm working on that song, but. I've, it's got a whole nother verse and I got a friend helping me. I, my friend Wilson back home, I'm hoping he's going to help me put a solo on it. And I told him he could handle the bridge and we'll, we'll be kind of like a songwriting team. You know, we, we do that. We talk on the phone for hours sometimes and write songs. I've actually written a lot of songs. Some of them are, you, I mean, not half bad. I mean, I don't know. Have you said it to her yet? It's not about a, Okay. It's loosely inspired by a girl that I used to oh, know. I, oh, I know. I know who it's inspired by. Have you, have you sent it to her yet? What do you mean you know who it's inspired by? Have you sent it to her yet? You don't know who it is. How would you know? Okay. Who do you think it is? Don't say uh, the I'm name. Not, I'm not going to say anything. I, I'm just wondering if you had sent it to her yet. No, I'm not going to send it to you. But uh, how about those lyrics, though? Can, the, your tattoos may be fading, but those legs are still in vogue. You see, it's like, hey, you're getting older, but you're still hot. You get the premise. I mean, yeah, I, what did you rhyme? What did you rhyme with vogue there? Did you? What was the next line, or what was the line before that or after? Tell me, honey, do you still have soul like rebels, ramblers, and rogues? I rhymed rogue with vogue. I mean, I'm like, oh, a, okay, I'm like a real Jay Z. You know, that's pretty good. Different kind of music, but hey. 
Uh, yeah. So I'll make sure I tell. I'll make sure I'll tell Wilson. He did a good job with that line. He didn't write that line, but he is. He he's good at playing the. He's more like a lead guitar player. He's better than I am at like the twelve bar blues would, and the. I would hope the, he's better at guitar than you. God damn it! I'm playing an open G. It's supposed to sound simple. All right. Um, I'm more the melody guy. I'm kind of you know finding the groove, kind of just a little rhythm guitar. So I, I think I'm going to start writing more songs though. I think I'm going to get back into it. For the last several is months, this, is this a cry for help? Are you are you now trying to? uh make a easy transition to tennessee like oh you know what uh the comedy you know i gave it a try but i think my real passion is songwriting so i i'm gonna move back to tennessee and try to become a songwriter that's where you that's where the energy's at tennessee songwriting that, that's what i'm gonna do man well i've always written songs i've always just dabbled in i've got notebooks that are just full of i mean most of it's dog shit you know but i've got just notebooks full of things people who are wired like me or like the, I, there's just people like us uh in our community they refer to what do they call us artists you know you just you do it for the love of the game it's not for the pay you do you do it because it lives in your soul and so i've just got notebooks full of just words and shit you get it you used to be a rapper I feel it, baby. That's not the kind of music I like. Every time you do that, yeah, rock, rock. That's it. I've told you before. Your that, favorite band has always got their tongue out. No. Hey, look. No. That's not what the... You're thinking of Kiss. You're thinking of... Man, I, I can't... I wish I had... The, I wish I still had the footage of you not really realizing the Rolling Stones were synonymous with the tongue. I wish I had that... I wish I had that audio. I you happen to be like. You think I don't know about the tongue? You, you didn't at the time, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah but you're man. not doing it. You're doing the Gene Simmons My, thing. You're, you're you got oh, kiss in your head. You got kiss no, in, in your mind. No, and this is the same argument we had. I was like, no, I know the tongue. I was like, my mom, my ma, she had a bunch of Rolling Stone stuff. You're like, there's no tongue. I'm like, yeah, that's the whole thing. And I wish I had the audio. I wish I had the audio. Well, you think I didn't know about the logo? <laughs> I wish I had the audio. There's well, somebody out there. There's somebody out there that listen that used to listen to talk sports that would be like, "Yep, I remember." Well, you just uh, you think there's anybody out there that listened to every episode we ever did? No, nobody's heard not, every non, single episode. Non-COVID related. <coughs> what does that have to do with anything? Ah, eh, just COVID. No sports. Eh, it was it was the dark point of the show. I get. I would understand if they kind of skipped that one. If they skipped from like, you know, March to. I mean, 2022 or whatever it was. I, I would kind of understand that. Yeah, I kind of skipped those shows too. There's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's definitely people that have been there since the beginning, but I would say it's very unlikely someone's listened to every single episode. How many episodes of radio do you think we've done together? Well, shit, man, just do the math on it. You know, it's like what six years minus two years. Minus, <laughs> well, how long have I? 2017 we basically went three straight years or may, maybe a yeah. month maybe a month shy of three years so mm -hmm. that's so that's what th call that 35 months times sure. what are we just trying to figure out the hours typically well i was just thinking so 35 months we'll call that 20 days in a month for radio purposes is how that works out or okay. business days typically typically rough math is 20 so 20 times 35 puts us at <clears throat> you're the you're the, the seven genius. 700 700 we'll call it roughly just 700 shows that's 700 shows you think in three years yeah i mean and like i, I said that's 20, probably conservative right i would say it's on the lower end but we took some time off i mean we, we, yeah. we had some vacation days and stuff, i had so. a couple deaths and whatnot yeah yeah so, me too r.i.p pops uh <laughs> We'll call it seven hundred. Put it the way you. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll so. call it. We'll call it seven hundred, and then yeah, you came back. When did you come back? Okay, so seven hundred, and then I came back August twenty two. So the second run lasted uh, fifteen months. Eighteen months. Fifteen months. This, when did I leave? No, I left after Christmas. So yeah, pr probably sixteen months. So twenty times fifteen is. Yeah, three hundred. Three hundred. So we've basically done. You could you could roughly estimate we've done a thousand shows. Wow. So that's that'd be what three thousand hours of radio, basically. 
I've done about 3,000. I'd say you've done about <laughs> 1,700 or so. But so we'll say yeah, yeah. a thousand. We'll say a thousand shows. Roughly, we did what one voluntary action, and we did uh, 30. We did. I think it was. I think we've done 33 podcasts so far. I think we did more than one voluntary reaction. I would say so. We'll just call it, we'll call it a thousand, we'll call it a thousand thirty episodes. I mean, I did some basketball stuff too. You weren't always there. I did a couple of those basketball VR. Are we just talking together? Yeah, yeah, I was just talking together. Who do you think's done? Well, no, it'd be you. I was going to say, who would ask? Well, because I did radio in college too, but you did too. So, like, I, I was going to say, who, how many? Who do you think's done the most hours? But it would. It oh, would, I mean, I, I I think I've got you trumped by a lot. Yeah, it would obviously be you, because I, would, it, I, I don't want to say I don't want to say doubled up, but like I'd say, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd say it might be doubled up, honestly. Well, you you spent more time than I did in college. You were older than me, and then I've you, pretty so you did much more there. only. I've pretty much only. I've pretty much only taken. Five, I've taken, we'll call it nine months. We'll call it 18 months off since 2011. So, I mean, I've done probably t- at least a oh, solid yeah. 12 years of radio, 11 and a half years of radio. That's crazy. I've done yeah, 10. You think, I, you think I'd be a little further in, along in my career at this point? I've done 10 years, but I took like three years off. So, call it maybe like seven, but really not entirely. It's been with yeah. you mostly. How about that? Yeah, I don't know if you're. I don't think you're my majority. I've, I've been with uh, more people than you. Oh, I'm definitely for, your majority. No, I don't think so. I'm the person you've done the most with. What do you well, mean? Yeah, but but not a majority. What do you mean? You have to be over. You have to be over fifty-one percent to be a majority. I don't. I don't think you've taken up fifty-one percent of my time. Hmm. Oh, I see. What that's you're what, well, I mean, yeah, that's that's what majority means. But I would, I mean, if it was an election and I got forty-two percent of you the would, vote, you you wouldn't have enough electoral votes. You wouldn't get elected. I think I've done. I, I think I've been there for half of your. No, radio. I don't think so. Just just do the math. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, there you did almost. I mean, just what, of the two last years with just uh, of the last just of the last since two thousand seventeen. You you've barely you're barely over half there. <laughs> You did. You did two years with Fat Hayden Wallen and uh, and Dynamite Draven, and then you did. Uh, well, you, you did six months with Range Rover Robert, and you did uh, five months. Charis- I did a whole year with of Kyle. I, Char- I did charismatic year. Kyle. I'm trying to think. I of did radio another year of college. I did another year of college. I did some with Basilio and, and Christian but Lundy. But I've been your most active partner. Yeah, I would say that. I, I don't argue that. I've got more time with you than anybody else. But if you add all them up together, I've been with them more than I've been with you. Sounds like you, you're not. It sounds like you really like that. That I'm not at half. It sounds- <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm, I'm just. I'm an OG in the game. Like, where I'm like eighty percent of your, eighty-five percent of your radio life. Uh, you haven't. You haven't been with many men. I have. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Um, yeah, I mean, my college radio. I get around a little bit. My college radio was like, I mean, I did every week for, you know, two and a half years. So there was quite a bit of time there without you. But that's only two shows a week for an hour, you know. And then there was. Oh, you're playing country music or rock and roll music. You'll be knocking on my door soon enough, sweetheart. You'll be back on my doorstep. Is this a song? Are you writing a song? Yeah, I'm working on it. You'll be back knocking on my doorstep, saying you were wrong, saying that you miss me. Sounds you like you me miss a song. me. You even wrote me a song. All right, I'm... let's get to the episode. Got to give some shout outs. I went through and did this work. So first of all, shout out to, I'm going to shout out some people that bought the t-shirts over the last week. Okay. Because, because they deserve it. Shout out to Ryan flat. There's where you say something nice about Ryan. Ryan flat. Um, I don't know who that is. I was going to try to make a flat earth thing, but my mind, you know, it's, Halfway through the day, brains. Not, hang on, let me get a zen so I can and do this podcast. That, 
And that is why they sent him home from yeah. Austin. Yeah, I was going to say from something. From Austin. I was going to say something stupid, like I'm more of a Ryan Round guy. But then I was like, you're going to make fun of me. And also, I mean, I know it's not funny. I'm just saying, like, I didn't have anything. So, you know, let me get his in. Jack- Jackson Martin? Jack's on. More like Jack's off. <laughs> Am I right? Okay. Alex Barkalo. Alex Barkalo, more like Bobby Bacala from The Sopranos. I uh, love uh, you, you got me there. I thought you were going to go bar- Barca instead of low. Well, I almost went Baklava. You probably don't know what that low. is, do you? Oh, a little Alex Sweet and Low. Maybe I thought that's where you were going. You know what Baklava is? Isn't that some type of food? It is. Keaton Schultz. Keaton. My stepbrother used to be named Keaton. We don't speak anymore. Any chance his last name is Schultz? Nope, it's not Schultz. I know what it is, and that's not it. Here's a good one for you. Landon Anglin. Landon Anglin. Landon Anglin. That, that's, there's too many G's. In, well, there's only one G in that. But Landon Anglin. What are you, a fisherman out there doing some uh, angling? I thought you said, I bet he's angling for a whooping. That's where I thought you were going to go there. Uh, Zane Winders. Zane Winders. He's out there with his sailboat. He, his family were sailors. That's where they got their name from. All right, these are getting better. These are getting better. Well, that's all. That's all I got. So, ah, so well, far shit. in the, the last one week, those, great. Yeah, in the last week, those are only the people that bought our shirt. However, shout out to them. I appreciate them. Go to fanrunradio.com slash shop to seek out the world's greatest podcast in America t-shirts. Uh, and while we're here, here's a new segment I like to call reading the comments from YouTube that I found to be funny or noteworthy. Okay, sounds fun. Let's go. T-W-G-P-A is the G-O-A-T. That's a guy who really likes acronyms. Thank you, Hero2. Sup, big bros, says Eddie Adams. Eddie Adams. Eddie Adams. Any relation to the Adams family? Now we're getting worse. T. Jones writes in a story about a celebrity encounter. We, we asked for these, so... A buddy of mine ran into Jay Cutler at a bar during his playing days and went to shake his hand. He said it was the most egregious big timing you could ever imagine. Huge eye roll, look away, dead fish handshake. Guy sounds like the biggest douche ever. Mm. T. Jones. I <laughs> uh, wonder if that was written by Tom Jones. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's funny he says that, by the way, because, you know, I actually know some people who know Jay Cutler. My teacher friends in Nashville, I've told you about, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to out them like this on the, well, I'm not mentioning their names, but they, they had uh, Jay Cutler's kid in their class. So they, they had Ooh. interactions with, they knew Jay, Cut- you know, that may be personal information. Is that like a HIPAA violation? If you, you talk to a teacher, uh, is it? No, nah, I don't think so. You haven't said anything damning yet. Well, and I haven't said their names, but I was just. If sc- they said they like were purposely failing him because they hated Jay Cutler or something, maybe we'd no, get into no, some no. trouble. But nothing like that. But they no, actually, they were very. The only things they've said were complimentary that they they got oh. uh, gifts like you know they, oh. they Jay Cutler treated them well, or or maybe it was wow. the mom, maybe it was the Cav- wow. Cavalieri bro. Cr- Kristen and Jay Cutler, Kristen Cavallari and Jay Cutler are bribing the teachers for good grades. Move over, Lori Laughlin. Aunt yes. Becky, there's a new criminal on the loose. <laughs> you heard it here first on the world's greatest <laughs> podcast in America. The Cutlers and Cavallaris were, were bribing teachers. You're gonna that get was me the in most trouble. that was the most anticlimactic, boring story I've heard all day. Well, the guy said he knew Jay Cutler, and I was just gonna say I know some people who know Jay no, Cutler. No, he said a friend of his ran into Jay Cutler. It was a very it was a secondhand bad celebrity story, which I'm gonna allow T Jones just because you were the, one of the only people that followed the prompt of commenting on YouTube with the worst celebrity story. So thank you, T. Jones. Thank you, T. Jones. It's not unusual. It's not a, that's what I was getting ready to go with. Damn it. You stole it already with the plus new pussycat. You're taking up all the, a lot of brain here. Well, we probably don't have a third one. Do we? It's uh... keep it rocky. My guys been listening to y'all do this for many moons. Never comment or call into fan run, but been religious listener prior to Shiano Sunday. Take over says Hogan's Valley. Shout out to Hogan's Valley. So maybe he's saying out of our thousand episodes of radio, maybe he's acting like he's listened to like, let's say 700 of them. I do wonder what the record is. If we, I would like to know that too. 
There's no, there's absolutely no way to quantify it, but you know, that could plug be our, our question for the week. Plug basement wants to know, Cody, what's the best dating site for Vegas? The casino floor. Yeah. That's really all you got to do is just walk around the casino floor. If a girl is sitting by herself at the slots uh, and wearing something nice, chances are, well, you know, working. you know, I've noticed something about some people. Some people don't see shit like that. Have you ever, like, if I go to a bar, I can spot a Coke dealer in five minutes. If I go to a casino, I can spot a hooker in five minutes. Because, like, you just learn these things. It's called street smarts. I don't know if you know this. But, you know, you and me, we've been on the streets, so we know how to spot these kind of things. Normal, regular type, wholesome folks, though, they go in a casino. They don't see that. They, you know what I mean? I no, I went to the casino one time, and my friend thought he was, like, actually picking up girls that, like, wanted to hang out with him for free. Like, oh, he's wow. like, man, my my game is so tight right now. I must be looking good, which is funny because I have a really a really normal, smart, street, you know, friend that actually is kind of aware of things like that. And he, he tells a story like that and, like, uh, talking about being in, like, Columbia, like going, like, going to Columbia on a trip and, like, being in the bar. And he's like, man, I feel like the man. I was walking around, and. All the girls wanted to talk. All the girls were, you know, gassing us up, talking about how cute we looked. And he's like, then I realized the entire room was prostitutes. Yeah, uh, that's just. So that's... I paid them six. So I paid them sixty dollars and went and had sex with them. <laughs> that's a pretty good rate. That's yeah. That's just it's just naive if you don't if you don't notice them. You know, usually any girl who's sitting by herself, she's wearing heels and she's got like a little purse. It's never a big purse either. It's a little purse. One of those little shiny. She's kind of shiny looking, you know. Just open your eyes and look around. You'll find you'll find what you're looking for. Well, and the later at night it is in the casino, like you're going to it's going to be you're much more obvious. I got to be honest. I would be mad. This is why I don't like going to Vegas with with people. This is why I'm pretty reserved when I go to Vegas. I would be mad if you brought an escort slash prostitute back to my room. If we were sharing a room, <laughs> why would you be I would mad? Just be I'd just be terrified. They were going to like rob us. They're not going to rob you. What do you mean? Like, have you, have you never heard of what happened to Warren Sapp in Miami? When, when he brought some girls up to the room in Miami, and did, they, they weren't even prostitutes. And they just basically busted in and held him, held him at gunpoint and took all his Jordans and jewelry and everything. Well, what the fuck are you traveling with? Uh, 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 it's Las Vegas. A, you you a, take cash. A platinum timepiece. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't go to Las Vegas. With, I mean, I don't know how you get down. I got a pretty good idea how you get down to Las Vegas. But, like, I'm not going to Las Vegas with, with less than $3,000. Well, you got to make sure that stuff's hidden away. I mean. You, what you, do you mean hidden away? Well, you're not just going to have it out by the by the by the television and the and the and the event guidebook, you know, and the holy. When Bible. they stick when they stick a gun in your face and you're in and you're and you're a in the gun? hotel room. Yeah. What yeah. hooker? What hooker has ever put a gun you're, in your face? This is so ironic. You just shit on people who are so naive. You've never even considered <laughs> the prospect that these <laughs> prostitutes could be walking in and not even they might not even be the ones that rob you. They get you naked and then their pimp kicks in the door or they open the door for the pimp and he comes in with a gun and you're already naked and he takes everything you got. Well, you're thinking of you, you know, as someone who's been held at gunpoint, I, I understand these things can happen, but you're really looking at the dark side of humanity. You're you're really uh, a little just too worrisome about this. I think that's true. If you can't trust prostitutes in Las Vegas, <laughs> who can you trust? Hey, Jesus liked prostitutes, didn't he? I mean, I Jesus, I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, like I've heard that Randy Travis, you know, three wooden crosses song. But, I mean, I don't think that. <laughs> I don't that. think that was the. I don't think that was the message. I've heard that Randy Travis song. Jesus likes prostitutes. <laughs> There's a country song for you. We could write that. I would right be. Now. Yeah, I, I was mad. I was mad when my friends brought in some escorts into the room just to hang out. I was like, get them out of here. He just brought Listen them in to, to hang your, out. Just, well, well, I don't know. Like, again, I don't think he knew that they were working. So, like, they just kind of were just hanging out. And then they eventually yeah. waited until night two to try to make a, a pass for money. And we're like, uh, no, no, we're not. We're not doing that. Just listen at some point after we get off the air. Just go listen to the rap song Mona Lisa by Lil Wayne. And maybe I'm, it'll I'm open aware your eyes of Mona Lisa. Up. I've heard that song. Do you not pay attention to the lyrics? What was that? The Carter five? 
Yeah, do you not? I, I don't know which card it was on either. Uh, is there a six? I don't know. I quit listening to Lil Wayne around 2012, like anybody with some damn sense. Well, but well like, look, anytime you dabble in the uh, in the arts of humanity, there's gonna be some some uh, shady. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna sure. run into. There's a risk. Sure. I understand. There's well, a I, risk. I would be very, I would be very mad if you brought that risk to my doorstep in my bed, where I keep <laughs> my money in the safe. I would be very angry, and that's why we've never gone to Las Vegas together. Well, if we went, we'd just get separate rooms, you know, and I don't really have, I don't travel with uh, gold chains and diamond jewelry, so it wouldn't really, or, and big wads of cash, it wouldn't be a problem for me. Well, I don't walk around wads of cash in Knoxville, but in Vegas, where you need cash to survive, yes, I do take a lot of money. You're walking are around ghosts, like big pimping. Are ghosts and supernatural occurrences a white people thing, asked Charles. Is Charles black or white? He's white he's white and he's asking it yeah i i I do think he's probably on to something there i do think it's it's got to be a pretty white i mean when you think of ghosts right you know casper i mean he was white uh ghostbusters bill murray really white there was Um, a black guy in ghostbusters though the only the only ghosts like i i don't really think of black people and ghost stuff like you know, there. I think there's the Get Out movie, but that's not really about ghosts. That's about Kanye West. I don't know if you saw that this week, but Kanye said that movie was about him. Um, oh no, I, I've seen I've seen that joke going around for years. I guess he was aware of it too. Yeah. Um, no, I mean I, when I think of black people, I, well, you know, I did. There actually, I did have. Be careful. Well, yeah, I was going to say I did have a, a racial slur come into my mind, which of course I'm not going to say that. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, this is the world's greatest episode in America, says Keaton. That was about the mailbag episode. Thank you, Keaton, and thank you for buying our shirts. Mm-hmm. Be like Keaton. Buy our merchandise, support the brand, and leave good comments complimenting us. Yes, it's the best. Keep it up, boys. Enjoying the shows. I'm looking forward to seeing the new logo whenever that happens. Hopefully that shirt comes in a classic gray. Some ideas for future shirts, not expected, of course, but I thought I'd throw the idea out there. Since the podcast was founded on following the trials and tribulations of a starving comedian slash vagabond, you could have a destination. You could have a destin more like vagina bond. You could have a (laughs) nailed it. You could have a destination series uh, shirt for L.A. and Austin. Have the shirt designed in a location centric theme like the podcast capital of the world and keep WGPIA weird. It could even have the dates that Cody lived there, almost like tour dates. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Biff2210, for all those ideas. In I'm, not good enough, I'm not good enough at art to do any of those things. That's why, all my, that's why all my shirts are always either a picture or just words. Well, how about A that? very easy picture that someone else has made for me or just words. How about that sketch that I sent you? You should put that out there and see if people like it. Just put on a shirt? Yeah, I think I captured our likeness pretty well on that sketch, don't you? I'll put it out there and we'll let it we'll let people vote on it if yeah. I can figure out I was I would say I'll put it in the YouTube video, but I'm not gonna do that. That takes too long. Uh Buck in Wild writes in. Buck Wild How many writes of these in. What are you gonna do? Uh, a couple more. A couple okay. more. We had a lot to catch up on. We had thirty episodes of comments I had to get to. I had no, to get I, to the best ones. I know about Buck Wild. He he had like seventeen comments. <laughs> Moving moving forward, this should be a much shorter segment just because, you know, it'll be after it'll be once a week. So like we'll have two episodes <laughs> to catch up on and only the good ones. Wait, what was uh, that? I said say? moving forward, I'll only have two episodes of comments to catch up on. I'll do this every Monday, the best comments of the week from the week before. But I had to catch up on thirty episodes. Oh, I thought you said we're moving to once a week. Oh, well, we might move to once a week. I mean, the, the fact that only, what I say, six people bought our shirt the last week, and this has really become, I don't want to say an inconvenience because I love talking to you. Yeah, I got to say, become, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's become a drain. Uh, since I, since I yeah. have started working at the radio station slash the apparel company more, it, it is tougher for me to sneak out in the middle of the day and do this, and it's tougher for you to do at night. So I, I do got to say, we are dangerously close. I think I'm ready to make the call that this will be – uh, we'll be moving to one episode a week. Let me uh, caution. I'm, I'm dangerously, I'm dangerously close to saying that. Let me caution you that that would really upset our audience, and that I don't support it. Well, we've sold six shirts in the last week and a half. 
I've gotten one new patron, which again, shout out to our boy Ben Turner. He cut the check, so thank you for joining patreon.com slash Reed's Ranch. And I love the podcast. Uh, I love the podcast. I love talking to you. But quite frankly, we don't get enough likes. We don't get enough subscribers. We don't get enough of this stuff to justify two times a week. How much Not more are you going to squeeze our audience? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. When I, These when I'm people doing... are trying to support us. And here well, I'm you just are. saying. We're going to get I, I, canceled I, like Tom and Bert. The no, next, the next I, podcast is just going to be an, a, an ad read. No, I appreciate the support. I'm thankful for every fan that I get, but I can't even stand to take a shit without someone standing by it. You know I won't sign your autograph. You can call me an asshole. I'm glad because I am whatever you say I am. You know what I mean? And if I, I wasn't, am the, what yeah. you say I am. Yeah, yeah you know, that's Eminem. What you say I am what whatever I, I am whatever you say. Yeah, I am. that's what I, I was said. doing it. I don't I don't need you to do it. No, you said I am what you say. Hey, do you I am. think not... Jay Z stole that? Please allow me to reintroduce myself from the Stones. You ever think that? What song did they say that in? Please allow me to introduce myself. Sympathy for the devil. I thought maybe he stole it from Austin Powers when Austin Powers was like, allow myself to reintroduce myself or to introduce myself. Was that the spy who shagged me? That was the first one. So, yes. Yeah. Those movies were fun. <laughs> yeah, I liked them. I liked them. I feel like uh, I don't know if they hold up well or not. I haven't watched them in a while, but I, I liked them. I'm from Holland. But anyways, Isn't I, that weird? I'm not I'm not trying to squeeze the audience. I appreciate it. I'm just saying. I do 15 hours of radio already. I do a couple extra podcasts already. Two has become an issue, and if there's not going to be enough support, then, you know, we might just go to one a week and make people really appreciate us and miss us. That's all I'm saying. If you're an audience, That's all I'm saying. If you're an audience member right now, rub your hands across your chest. What's that you feel? Those are udders. Those are udders, and you're being milked. I've no, got what nipples, I'll say Greg. Is- can you milk me? What I'll say is there are thousands of people that listen to this episode and we or not this episode, but this podcast. And I appreciate the ones that hit like and subscribe. I appreciate the 105 people that left us five star reviews, but 105 out of 2000. That's not a very good conversion rate. Six shirts out of 2000. That's not a very good conversion rate. One patron. Now, I know there's already some patrons and I appreciate them. I didn't I get any the- patrons. That's not true. I sent you money already and you already owe me like five hundred seventy five dollars. I don't get any patrons. But also, like, I appreciate all those people, but there's a lot of people that are just standing by oddly, like our boy. Before before this past episode, our boy Hogan's Valley says, look, I've been listening to you guys for, for many moons, for years, but he's never commented or called in. So, like, how are we supposed to know you're out there, we Hogan's just, Valley? We got to trust it. You know, we got to trust it that they're well, out there. I, I know, but we're doing our job. We're doing – I'm doing – you know, 19 hours of, of talking a goddamn week. We the least get they it. Could, You're busy. We the least get they it. could do is hit like and comment. Hey, guys, great job. Keep up the work. By the way, Cody's fat. Something like that. It'd be like, ha, 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 ha. That's a good one. Ha, ha. We get it. You're gainfully employed. You have a job. You're not collecting welfare. We get it. Buck Wild writes in, no roulette method works, Cody. That's, that's where I side on. No roulette method works. I think it's, kind of, it's just math. Now it's I just d- math. Now I did see Buck Wild's comments, and and I think Buck Wild was commenting on the podcast as he watched it. I think he was commenting like it was a live feed. Uh, Which I, I like. I I like that. That's that's uh, that's a good a Buck Wild mood. Algorithm. It adds jacks those numbers up. Yeah, that's a Buck Wild mood, and I uh, and I appreciate him. <clears throat> Indeed, the world's greatest podcast writes in Palacia Prince. Do what? palacia prince writes in indeed the world's greatest podcast oh you said that backwards i think you just went like dyslexic in your in your brain no. somehow. Uh, either way hey jay cook go ahead oh no go ahead sorry there's a bit he of a delay in, it's better when we're in, in the same room he says indeed the world's greatest podcast aj cook writes in this is the most depressing shit I've ever listened to in my life. Can't I, wait for the next episode. Yeah, I bet AJ can't even cook. I bet that's a lie, that name. More like AJ can't cook, am I right? I don't know. You would think so, but hold on, because he kind of cooked here. He said a comment of the week type of segment may encourage people to comment more often. So thank you, AJ. This was your idea. Comment of the and week. This one, and this one might be my favorite one. 
Read for Adventures, which I don't know exactly what that means because Read for Adventures is spelled like my last name. I don't know if this is a fan page. I don't know exactly what this is. Maybe, you know, Google Read the number four Adventures and, you know, give them some, some traffic online. He writes in, Cody has done more food reviews while in Austin than he ever did on his segment on Talk Sports, which well, I, I found that one to be pretty funny. Well, there was a lot more work involved with that. You know, here I can just do them spontaneously. I like just doing a food review of something I happen to eat instead of scheduling it out ahead before time. You know, when I feel like I got to do work, I'm less likely to do it. Whereas if I can just do it freely and spontaneously, I, I work a lot better that way. I'm an artist in that way. You don't want to be restrained. I get it. So you don't want to. You don't want to be held down by the constraints of job responsibilities or, can't or put segment no chains on me. Write that down. That's a good lyric. Can't I put can't no chains be chained. Ooh. I'm so untamed. Maybe that. Maybe My I name put is that. Cody, but you're to blame. Maybe I can put that in the bridge. You can't yeah. Put, you can't put no chains on me. Yeah, something like that. No, hmm. darling, I can't. No, no, sir. She won't be tamed. Pedro, you Pedro. Could, you could go ahead and throw away those chains. Pedro, Pedro. Well, that's all the comments I have. So you got anything to talk about? We're 40 minutes in. We haven't talked about anything yet. Well, yeah, I had all kinds of topics. Uh, well, rapido, the, rapido, 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 let's go. rapido. You got to roll the R there. Um, I had, uh, well, not you, every R is rolled in, in, in Spanish, by the way, do you want the Uber report first? Or do you want to hear about old man, Tommy next door? Uh, actually I want to hear about old man, Tommy next door first. Well, I've, I've met old man, Tommy, you know, I told you I met the old man next door, but I've actually spent his name, Tommy. Yes. I've actually spent more time talking to this guy than I have any of my neighbors since I've been gone. Okay. You there? Which is kind of funny because you make fun of me for talking to old man, but here you go. Since you've been gone. um, That's good. Put that one down, too. Since you've been gone, now I feel like I can breathe again. For the first time. Ooh, Uh, for the first time. That's a good one. Put that one down. Yeah, yeah. Uh Okay. Well, I met old man Tommy next door, and and he told me that he's he's, he's trying to get me to drink with him. I'm fucking sick and tired of hearing you play that guitar, son. (laughs) Every every time I go out there, old man Tommy tries to get me to drink with him. He's sitting out there drinking beer, and I'm always... Be be careful. He's going to spike your beer, and he's going to steal your kidney. Steal my kidney? Yeah, and sell it on the black market. Why would he do that? Because people need kidneys in the black market, they'll play. They'll pay a pretty penny. Old man Tommy's not going to try to do that to me. Uh, okay, this man's in his seventies. And I don't know. Maybe he is trying to fuck me though. Hmm. At least get a hand job out of you. Yeah. Anyway, he's trying to been What's trying that to- mouth do boy. He's been trying to get me to drink beer with him every time I walk out there. But mm, we we've been making. Yours. A little- you're sweet as Tennessee whiskey. Well, that's what I was going to tell you. We've been making a lot of small talk, you know, just asking about, you know, where you're from, what you've been doing. And I told him I went to see the Stones in Vegas. He said he's got a buddy who was in the Texas Tornadoes who has a picture with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, and he's got it autographed, and Tommy's got it in his trailer. Which he Tommy's didn't... got it in his trailer? Yeah, he didn't invite me to see it, but he's got it in there. Anyway. He's not trying to fuck you too much, though. Would you have gone in his trailer? <laughs> if he told me Would... he had, yeah, yeah. If he told me he's got an autographed <laughs> Keith Richards Mick Jagger uh, photo, yeah, I, I'd he's go in there. Cl- he's gonna club. He's gonna club you in the damn head. <laughs> yeah, and here you were worried about the hookers doing it. It was old man Tommy all along. Anyway, so classic twist. But here's what the old man Tommy was telling me that he's he's moving to North Carolina to the Smokies. And we were I'm talking. moving to North Carolina. Wait, heads. I'm going to California. Tails. I'm no, going it's... to North Carolina. Heads, Carolina. Tails, California. Oh, that sounds better. Write that down. Write that down for your song. I think it's already taken. But anyway, so he was telling me that he's moving in with his daughter in North Carolina. He's moving to Asheville. And we were talking about Asheville. I said, oh, yeah, they got that uh, Biltmore mansion there. It's a good, big, good, nice-looking place there. That's where they filmed Richie Rich. Yeah. So anyway, I've I've been getting to know him better. 
And uh, also, I picked up somebody the other day who was first cousins with the Dodgers catcher Will Smith. How about that? How about it? Yep. And she told me a little inside information here, a little breaking news on the podcast. Will Smith hates living in L.A. So much so that he and his wife live in Vegas most of the year, except during baseball season, he has to live in L.A. Man, parents just don't understand. He walks up to the French Prince of Bel-Air. Do you know that? That's his walk-up music. That's pretty chuggy. I mean, he's an MLB catcher. He's probably doing all right, you know. Sure. Even though he hates his life because he's stuck in L.A. I met another beautiful girl from L.A. Uh, Saturday night, Indian girl. And I got to tell you, and I, and I don't mean this any kind of way, but she's the most beautiful Indian girl I've ever seen. She, I mean, this girl was stunning, and she was rich. She said she's from Calabasas, and you could just you could smell the gold on her. Like she just, she just like, she's neighbors with the Kardashians, but she was telling me about her life in Calabasas. And the, the only reason I say that is just because Indians typically not my preferred, like, you know, like I said, I don't mean it any kind of way. It's just not my preferred uh, race. That sounds wrong, but she was just stunningly gorgeous, stunningly beautiful Indian woman and LA nine, which is high. It's very high. Krishna. LA nine. Oh my God. The name was Krishna. Yep. Also had some girls from Sweden. They gave me a pants explosion. Um, what else do I have? I'm running out of topics. Oh, some other girl. Well, you know, this seems boring. Why don't you, I, it's just, I just, I, I got rides I can talk about, but that's really all I got going on in my life. I don't want to bore our audience. Well, I'll go ahead and tell this last one. I picked some girls up off the side of the interstate the other day, which I thought was very weird. And I was like, you know, as soon as I pulled up, I'm like, oh shit, what is this? This is, this has got to be bad, right? You know, nobody should be on the side of an interstate requesting an Uber ride. You know, you know what they told me? What they, they tell you? They told me that they were riding with a guy and, and a friend, two guys. One of the guys was their friend. The other guy was a guy that they didn't know, but that was friends with the other guy. And apparently Paramore started playing in the car, Haley Williams. And they said that the guy driving the car freaked the fuck out and whipped it off on the shoulder and like slammed on the brakes, nearly caused a wreck and said, you don't sing along to Paramore. And like, he had this whole thing. He said he used to date Haley Williams. And I was like, there's no chance in hell this guy dated Haley Williams. But they said he was dead serious. The guy's like 40 years old or what, 45 years old, and kicked him out on the side of the interstate. I mean, it's uh, very possible he dated Haley Williams. I just, I, the likelihood, though, of a guy. Well, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, well, sure, the likelihood is low, but there's there's somebody that's running around in small town Tennessee that's telling people that he used to date Taylor Swift or maybe he's moved off and lives in in Texas somewhere and he's like yeah I used to date Taylor Swift and they're like get the fuck out of here you didn't date Taylor Swift but he's like yeah he's from where I'm from we dated for a little bit and you know like there's somebody probably named Drew out there trying to convince everybody that he used to date Taylor like uh, uh, every famous person has a beginning that is cool when you think about it. Like, there's some guy out there that probably just, like, finger-blasted Miley Cyrus, you know? Well, she's a little different. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are guys out there that finger-blasted Miley Cyrus. But she was been, probably you know, she was kind of famous. more with Miley. <laughs> she, she was kind of famous her whole life. So, like, I, I bet there's a lot fewer randos out there that have that story with Miley. That's probably true. But Miley, I like, feel like. She's been like, famous since she was, like, eight. You know what I mean? Like, she's true. probably. And her dad was famous, you know, or his, you know, her whole life. So, I'd imagine there are a lot fewer people that got their hands on Miley. No pun intended. Do you think that Billy Ray Cyrus feels like a loser in that the only thing people know him for is the song with Little Nas X? No. What the? What? People still know Achy Breaky Heart. No. They, uh, you yeah, know. they do. No, no, they no, still know no, Achy no. Breaky Heart, and they You're... still know he has a really famous daughter. No, no, well, no. The song with Little Nas X is is on there. It's in the top three, probably. 
but I'm not saying it's clear cut number one. But you got to you got to put yourself in the shoes of current day American. The current day American that didn't grow up on country music does not know Achy Breaky Heart. Average. Well, they dude, know him as no, they know him as Miley Cyrus's dad. Well, yeah, there's that, but like the more than they know the Lil Nas X song. I'm just wondering if Billy Ray feels like a loser that he had this entire career, you know, that spanned years in the '90s and and uh, this uh, years and years of country music. But now the only thing anybody knows him for is the little Nas X thing. I'm wondering if it makes him like feel a certain type of way. Cause I'm just saying anybody who knows Billy, anybody who's under the age of 25 that knows Billy Ray Cyrus and is not like a country person knows him because of that little Nas X song. And I just wondering if that, that makes him feel like a loser. I would say he enjoys every time he gets a check from it. You think he gets checks from Hannah Montana? I would imagine so. Did Billy Ray Cyrus kind of pimp out his daughter to Hollywood? Now that's the question. Did he? Or did he, he make a deal just, with the devil? Or, or did he just let her do what she probably wanted to do? That's the question when it comes to these child actors, bro. That's, you need to go watch that Nickelodeon documentary we talked about where they're diddling kids. Like That's the question that the whole show is raising like are these parents just terrible people or or did their kids want to be famous and they tried to try to give them tools to be famous way to make it weird i'll put it on my list well no i mean it's probably it's true like i'm sure you never watched it the the show the rehearsal on hbo the rehearsal yeah did you ever watch the rehearsal on hbo no i'm trying to think whether or not i should suggest it for you what's it about do you know who Nathan Fielder is? Yeah, that com- comedy guy you like, Nathan yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, but he had a show called The Rehearsal, where Ooh. basically the concept is he lets people rehearse for some big thing in their life. <laughs> he, he creates the exact replica of the situation and lets them get like practice reps in. So for one guy, he was trying to confess to his trivia <laughs> teammate that he lied about having a master's degree. So they go through like really just crazy, meticulous detail to recreate this bar that they were going to go to and like hires a girl to like research this girl and tries to be, you know, basically tries to re- you know play this out. That's the first episode. But then in the, uh, the later episodes, he ha- finds this woman who is like 38 and wants to be married and has a, have a kid. That's a tough so ask he- at 38. Well, right, but she's like, I don't even know if I want a kid, blah, blah, blah. So, like, he basically builds her a home in, like, Oregon and moves her out to the farm and lets her simulate having a kid. And, let, like, not actually, like, childbirth, but lets, like, moves in these child actors with her and, like, lets her practice being a mom. Hmm. But then the show evolves towards the end about the effects of being a child star because one of the kids that played, like, the five-year-old version of the boy – starts thinking that Nathan is his dad because he doesn't have a dad. He like has been hanging out with him for the last two weeks. He's like, I love you, Nathan. Will you be my daddy? And like, so then it kind of morphs into Nathan, you know, kind of talking about the dangers of child acting and how these kids get so fucked up and how the parents are kind of terrible for putting them in there. Now, is this a true story? Yeah, no, it's like reality. It's like reality TV. Yeah. Hmm. I would suggest you watch it. No, yeah, like it's it's so it's it's so beautiful. It's like so beautifully genius. Like it's a comedy, but then like yeah, then it actually starts hitting like some real life shit. And like he's it's he's making a joke kind of of the people and of the mom at least. And I don't really know how to explain it, but also like holding a mirror up to society of basically like we shouldn't put these five year olds in these acting scenes because they can't differentiate what's real and what's not real, and it fucks them all up. Well, it, it's definitely. I mean, it definitely fucks a kid up. There's, there's no way that it can't, right? Like, be, just being surrounded, like you're, you're. It, it's kind of like being the pageant kid. You know, you're, just, you're, you're put on with this like glamour from an early age. Like, it's got to do something to the psyche. I you mean, saw poor Honey Boo Boo, right? You saw poor Honey Boo Boo go viral like a month ago, didn't you? What happened to her? Did she get obese? I assume. Yeah. Well, she's, she's, yeah, she, she. Yeah. yeah. She's a big old girl, much like her mom. Yeah. But her mom snorted up all their money. And there was a clip that went viral of basically uh, Honey Boo Boo crying because she didn't have any money for college. And her and her older sister are yelling at the mom about how that, you know, the mom 
Now, when you stole say this money from snorted them. up, was she a, she had a coke addiction or was she just eat? Did she I think eat everything? It all? No, uh, coke, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, all of it. Yeah, I thought you meant she snorted it up like a like a like a elephant or something. Like she's a big fat woman that, that didn't go where I thought it was going to go. But anyway, um, so where, what were you talking about? Where are we at? Just the pageant girls. I mean, Honey Boo Boo got fucked up from a Chinese. And I've talked about I, I dated a pageant girl, and I wouldn't say that she was all the way fucked up, but uh, she definitely yeah. talked about like you know uh, what it put on her in terms of needing attention for most of her life and like needing to like feel validated by everybody and the relationship it had on like her and her mother. So like, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty fucked up thing. So I I would suggest it's a little weird. I don't know if you'll like it. I don't know if you're smart enough to stay with it, but uh, the rehearsal, it's it's a bit insulting. I I would watch it and see if you like it. The first episode is really funny, but then it goes from something funny to kind of just like, Oh my God, this is so fucked up. So this pageant girl you dated, how old was she? When she was in pageants or when I dated her? When you dated her. 14. And you broke up just last year? And then we (laughs) dated again in college. (laughs) You're a real creep. Well, anyway, staying on the topic of sex work, an Ohio sex worker admitted that she had HIV and had over 200 clients and, and did not tell them about her HIV. Isn't that crazy? Eh, well, you know, you feel you feel for anybody who you was... feel something. <laughs> actually, you and don't it's with HIV. A bit of an itch. I, actually, that's not true about HIV at all. You don't feel anything. It's just in you. You have no clue. Oh, it doesn't make you itch. No, no, it doesn't. You just don't know. It's in your blood. What are you, what are your top five uh, STDs? How, how would you first rank of all? Them? First of all, they're called STIs. STI, that's a callback. What? Uh, how do you rank them in terms of severity? Talk sports, have stand up. I mean, I don't know. HIV has got to be the worst. Although these well, days, AIDS who knows? Is maybe number it's one, not. right? Well, you get you don't get AIDS from sex. You get HIV you get, first, right? You get AIDS from untreated HIV. I believe is how it goes. That's right. That's right. So that's number one. Got to be. Uh, here's a prompt for the audience <laughs> right in the worst std sti you've ever had and how what, you got it what percentage of the audience you think is currently dealing with an sti the statistics say 25 percent. 25 percent, huh isn't that it isn't one in four doesn't one in four people have who that's a lot at least like herpes that you can treat I'll continue to stay abstinent because of that. And only that reason alone. <laughs> I mean, you got to be a real piece of shit to, to a, a, affect. I mean, I know she's trying to make a living, but to affect 200 people with HIV or to infect, not affect, effect, a f- infect to infect 200 clients with HIV. I mean, come on, bitch. You know what? What's the deal well, with that? The scary thing is when you start thinking about those 200 people then going and having sex with people. Yeah. Probably a lot of other people got it. Well, like I got saying, like if if those people are cheating on their spouse or cheating on their lover and they're in an intimate relationship where they're not using condoms and they come home and all of a sudden you're banging somebody who has HIV and you had no way of knowing. And then, yeah, I mean, like that's crazy, especially like if if they start having sex with other people and just start spreading all over Ohio, which Ohio is really bad for STDs anyway. So, yeah, maybe in Ohio you should be wearing a condom at all times. But I was watching the first episode of that Ashley Masson documentary. Are you familiar with it at all? Is that the lingerie? No, no, that you're thinking of that big model, right? I mean, her name might be Ashley Masson to that big old girl. I was no, thinking Ashley about Mass- one of those like one eight hundred numbers you dial late at night. Oh well, yeah, that's I don't, where do you get lingerie from? That I don't know. For you some know what, reason, do you know what lingerie is? Do I know what lingerie? Ray, I've, I've, I've I've had. You can't I've, even say it. I can't seen, even say lingerie. I, I've, in the last uh, in the last week, I've seen two women in lingerie. Okay, I know what lingerie is. But yes, Ashley Madison was that dating website, that dating service that was basically just. Married people trying to have sex with other married people. I thought those were swingers. Was, no, no, they were cheating. They were trying to cheat. The, they were oh, 
Wow. Yeah, they were looking for affairs. And, you know, in it, there's like one guy who's talking about cheating on his wife. And I was just thinking, yeah, like, I mean, just he goes, he gets a disease, he comes back, he gives it to her. I don't know if that's what happens in the show or whatever, but I'm just, it's kind of crazy. I was looking for a fare earlier today when I was Ubering. I see why they're <clears throat> sending them home from Austin. A New York City law student says she hold was. On, a- hold on, hold on, I got it, I got it, I got it. Can't you tell? This is Austin, and we're sending you home. I'll workshop it a little bit. That's the best your guitar sounded all day. That's an open G strum. A New York City law student says she was addicted to cheese, and she had to go to a rehab for it, which no, cost man, her. S- I don't want. I don't want to talk about this dumb bitch. No, nope, I'm not buying this. I'm not. I'm not playing into the machine to your algorithm. I don't give a okay. fuck about that dumb. I don't give a fuck about that dumb okay. cheese bitch. All no right. thanks. Relax. Move on. We'll move on. I'm going to spend $15,000 to go to cheese rehab so I can go viral and become okay. famous. Get the we fuck out of here. We get it. You don't want to hear it. Megan Barry, the former mayor of Nashville, is apparently making her return to politics. Some thought she was dead and buried when it came to politics. Hey, oh, a new study says 69% of divorces are initiated by women. I wonder what the percentage of affairs are up to in terms of married. I was trying to get a fair earlier today when I was Ubering. Just married people cheating and how many are uh, initiated by the woman these days. I don't know. Isn't it interesting how all these topics can tie together, how we can just weave all these into like a ball? That's it's, art, baby. That's it, art. It is there art. A, there ain't a lot of people that are as good as me and you, buddy. The pick yeah. and roll we got, the two-man game, ain't as many people can do it like us. That's true. That's true. Some people want even more of us, I've heard. Like in a sex sex way? They want to see us sex each other? Again, making it weird. A plus size influencer was upset because they would not wheel her down the jet bridge to the airplane. I'm really glad you said her and not him because I'd have asked how you got over getting well, home from Las Vegas. I say her, but to be honest, she kind of gives off they them vibes. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but she's you've probably seen this girl. She's the one that her ass was so big that she orders the two plane seats. She's an I influencer. I've seen this bitch. Move on. Why do you talk? Why do you talk about these people? Why do you I'm give just, them shots? I'm just giving you news. I don't care about these people. They're just trying desperately to go viral. Well, let's see what else I've got here. I wrote down why. Hey, do- look, guys. Hey, look, guys. An influencer does something pretty fucking stupid, so they can be talked about on the news. No thanks. Let's see. Scotty Scheffler arrested. I think we talked about that. Why do protesters hide their faces? I I wrote. Um, <laughs> Okay, I gotta go. Enough's enough. Uh, You've had give me enough? something good. Give me something good to land the plane. I, I gotta oh, go eat. Actually, I had a whole section of uh, restaurant observations I wanted to get to. Tune in on Thursday, everybody, for the last time that you'll hear two episodes per week tomorrow. You're, uh, you're going to really upset people by saying that now. Well, I'm being serious. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. <sighs> Are you? Yes. Yes, I can't. Unless you could just accommodate and, and record at night whenever I call. But, like, I, I have a different schedule, man. I, I can, got a lot of shit I got to do. I can try to accommodate if, we, if we'll if we still do two. Do you not want to do I'm, two? Or are you just... I would love to do two, but, like, the, the response from the audience, uh, you know, it's just... There's a lot of people out there not pulling their weight. If you are somebody commenting and liking and subscribing and buying the merch... You're doing your job. I'm not talking about you guys. I love you guys. It's the other people that aren't showing love, enough love, that, you know, say, hey, you know, we'll just, we'll do one an ep- we'll do one a week and, you know, maybe add, people... maybe, maybe we'll do one episode and add 20 minutes a week to it. And it's kind of like, you, you know, it's kind of like you got two episodes. Just listen to half on Monday and half on Thursday. 
people are busy, man. They got a lot going on and you're busy and I know everybody's busy. Uh, you know, it's the holidays and a lot of people are, are celebrating things this time of the year and they got things that, you know, people are celebrating graduations, you know, the, their cousins getting out of the funeral business. There's a lot of stuff to celebrate this time of the year. The weather's warming up. And the, so you got to cut them the a little slack. The world's greatest podcast in America t-shirt would have been a great graduation gift for the graduate in your life. Would it? Is that what a graduate wants? <laughs> okay, here's here's a compromise. We'll do an hour and 10 minutes, and I'll just cut the podcast up in half, and you'll get half of it on Monday, 35 minutes. You'll get the other half on Thursday, 35 minutes, and then you still get your two episodes a week. Bada boom, problem solved. There's some guy right now locking the door at the school, getting ready to go home from his janitorial position, and he's looking forward to a second podcast and and you're trying to deprive him of it. You know, they're, they're, what if we, what if we backlog? What, what if we record two at one time? We could do that. Well, see, there's a fine line. We don't really get warmed up until about, you know, minute 35 or so, <laughs> but then after minute 120, we are, we're, we're running on fumes. So like backlogging. It goes, Ooh, you. you know, it's more like, it's not a straight it's not a straight climb up we 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 stay idle for a little bit then we go up all right well on the next podcast remind me of, of, to give my restaurant observations because i've got several of them restaurant observations coming up on thursday and also feel free to comment some more power ranking ideas we owe you a power ranking and then that's it. We won't do any more Thursday episodes. We'll just do Sunday night episodes, and he's, that'll be all you just, get. He's joking about that. <laughs> he's one hundred. We're gonna work this out. We're gonna work this out. I'm one hundred percent not joking. Thank gonna, you to the people who like, subscribe, and buy T-shirts. I'll close with this: Richard Pryor once performed in Africa, and his opening line was, "Y'all all look like me, but I don't know what the fuck you're saying." It's pretty funny, isn't it?